let's talk about an important technique of intermediate ice climbing, switching hands with your ice tools. Hello everyone, I'm Jason. Everything in climbing, all kinds of climbing, has trade-offs. That's the nature of an inherently risky activity. When we mitigate risks, it's usually because we are trading off another set of risks. We bring less gear so we can go faster, but then we have less material to deal with contingencies. We wake up early to avoid melting snow and ice, but then we have to navigate in the dark. There are no perfect solutions. The guy that taught me to ice climb drove that point home when he taught me about switching hands on an ice tool. This is something that you often need to do when moving diagonally or sideways. We talked about three types of transitions. First, we talked about putting the tool in your mouth. Crazy, you might be thinking, but competition climbers do it all the time. Why? Well, it's fast. And the more gymnastic climbing styles of competitions require many, many grip and hand changes. And the competitors are in a comparatively controlled environment with less danger when they fall. Then there is hanging your tool across your chest and over your shoulder. Competition climbers used to do this, and it has also made its way into the non-competition scene. The upsides are that it's pretty fast and is actually pretty darn secure too. The downside is that you have a serrated blade around your neck and a sharp pick in your back. Not ideal if you fall and hit anything. So the guide, after reminding me that A, I'm not in a competition, B, I'm not sponsored, and C, I'm not that photogenic anyway, he suggested the thumb hook technique. You start by ensuring you have a good stick and great feet. I then want to hook the tip of the pick of one tool on the thumb of my hand that is on the other tool. If I'm properly hanging on my tools using the pommels and my fingers rather than a full fisted grip that requires my thumb, this shouldn't be a problem. Now I can take my free hand and move it into the higher grip, known as second position, on the tool that is still engaged with the ice and transfer my weight to that new hand position. Then I can take my lower hand off while keeping the pick hooked on my thumb. I want to immediately transfer that pick to the thumb on my second position hand so that I can adjust my free hand down to its proper first position grip. I can now swing this free tool. With a good stick and hang, I can adjust my second position grip back down to first position so it's ready for the next swing. The downsides are obvious. It's slower, it has lots of changes involved, and each change is a chance to drop the tool, and the move to second position creates more outward pull. So why do it? When we aren't in competition, the consequences of a fall can be pretty high. Routes that aren't overhanging mean the potential for any part of our body to hit the ice on the way down is higher. We are keeping the pick away from vital body parts. So this is about staying stable and methodical and reducing the consequences of a fall rather than the likelihood. And that's the method I typically use because, well, there are no perfect solutions. Thanks for watching this video. Please hit that like button. Please subscribe and ring that bell. And you can check out our website at shortguysbetaworks.com to find gear lists, all of our videos, and additional thoughts and information. Have you ever been ice climbing? Or is this something that maybe you don't want to get into? Let us know in the comments. We'll see you next week and keep on getting more out of that big outside.